Hello Aces, welcome back to module two, lesson 4.2. Today we're gonna to be talking about crafting your customer avatar. The four steps on how do you create your customer avatar, we're gonna roll up our sleeves and start working. So make sure you guys stay attention. So in the beginning of our module, we talked about the golden trifecta. The golden trifecta, once again, if you're not aware, are the three different components. We're trying to find this overlapping spot right here that would ensure our restaurant to become profitable. And today we're on the final stages in crafting our customer avatar. Super excited. If you already haven't done so, make sure you go back to the first lesson to check out what the golden trifecta is. It is something that will change the course of your restaurant. So go back if you haven't already done so. Nonetheless, here are the four steps to create your master customer avatar in the link below. Download the worksheet and work with me. All right, let's get going. Master avatar, find your dream dogs. List out the three dream food and beverage brands that inspires you, that are your direct co competition. And these are the people that we're gonna dissect, we're gonna be able to model them, and we're gonna be able to learn from them. Once again, download the worksheet in the link below. Second step is to dissect their online channels. For each of these restaurants, they deconstruct their whole website, social media channel, and all their reviews. What language do they use? Do they use really a health cautious language or are they really casual? Are they really uh, fine dining and really proper? What language do they use? Because whatever language they use is a direct relation to the customer that they are serving. Talk to talk about themselves and their food, to talk about their customers, exactly how are they talking about themselves and their food? Exactly how are they talking to their customers? What languages did they use? What kind of, um, what is it that they're presenting to them? And by the way, I will provide an example very, very shortly, so make sure that, um, so yeah, don't worry about that. What language do their customers use? Understand what language their customer use. Are they very sophisticated or are they very casual as well? By us studying them, we're gonna be able to understand what is going on to talk about their experience of the brand, to talk about what they're interested in and what they're not interested in. These are all really great insights and how they can tie in together, I'll explain further, so don't worry. Third up is set up a tent. Now that we have dissected them, we've done our online stalking, our online research, it is time to go to the location and set up a tent and actually take notes of their customers. Oh, by the way, when I say set up a tent, I don't literally mean to set up a tent. I just mean to actually go there and stalk them, whether you be sitting in your car or you just loitering around, it doesn't really matter. You just need to be there for an extended period of time to do your on-site primary research. What types of people are coming in, whether it's couples, families, solos or groups, age ranges, clothes, brands, they're wearing language that they speak. Uh, what are they ordering? How did they get there? What are they doing while waiting their food? Um, and what kind of questions do they have when ordering? Are people asking about, hey, you know what? Um, what kind of ingredients is this? Well, when people ask, hey, what kind of ingredients is this? Or is this vegan? Um, or do you have vegan options? These are all really great insights that you need to write down, okay? Next up is to talk to them, okay? And after they purchase something or you see someone that's like, oh, you know what? These guys seem like they, they just come out of the restaurant or whatever the case may be, offer them a gift card, maybe a $10 gift card for five minutes of their time. I've tried this and it has worked wonders for me, okay? So a lot of people have found success in this. You just need to be able to come out of your comfort zone to go out there and reach out. That is something that I cannot help you with if you're not willing to do it. I'm giving you the strategies to con to actually get the results, okay? And it works. So definitely you have what it takes. You just need to have the courage to go and ask, okay? This really be able to uncover who they are and their goals, uh, their demographic, why are they there, their day to day, and where they hang out and their interests. Having this insight is super, super valuable. If not, I would say it's one of the most, it's the essential part to creating something that tailors to your customer avatar, okay? Super, super important. Now, let's dive into an example of the four steps to create a customer avatar based upon what I've taught you. First step is to find your dream dogs. Let's say, for example, I wanna create a bubble tea shop, okay? In Vancouver, locally, the three biggest bubble tea shops are Coco, Cha Time, and The Alley. After I identified them, I go on their online channels and for the sake of this example, we're gonna be diving into Cha Time. Cha Time is one of the more popular Asian bubble tea chains out there. What I've seen so far is that, okay, you know what? They refer to themselves as a, as a traditional Taiwanese bubble tea. 
They also have summer collaboration with nostalgic beverage brands known to Asian millennials. So Vitasoy is a really big brand that is, is known throughout the, the, of the whole of Asia. Let's just put it that way. Uses a creative name and then lists out ingredients underneath. So Secret Blossom, what is Secret Blossom? Okay, you know what? It's a little bit mystique, but then right after they tell you exactly what is it uh, with the ingredients so it don't throw your customers off. Okay, you know what? I kind of have a feeling on who is it that they're serving, just kind of, but let's dive in a little bit deeper. In the About Us page, you see that they use fresh and natural ingredients and it's highlighted. Okay, you know what? It tells me a little bit deeper into their customer avatar that they're more health cautious they're more going for the natural ingredients rather than powdered okay you know what i'm, I'm picking that up as i'm dissecting their online channel <clears throat> brewed fresh high quality natural flavors quick mention of health benefits and their teas okay you know what wow they're really highlighting this having this as, as a forefront of what they're doing skin care stress buster joints and bone health okay you know what it's really diving into the health aspect of drinking bubble teas and that's something that i now know that if i were to want to serve the same type of customer demographic i really need to pay attention to the health aspect of things even more we talk about the chai cut chai cha guide what is that it allows the people to customize their drinks to their likings okay this shows me that okay the fact that it's on their website shows me that the customers are wanting this because otherwise why would they have it on their site and that personalization is super important for the customer demographic. So if I were to order uh, offer something similar, I need it to be customizable. I can't just have a have an off the shelf item, right? I cannot do that because people are wanting to customize the sweetness level, the ice level, and that is a really big cultural thing that people are needing. Next up, even deeper, right? As we're studying and uh, dissecting their channels, we're diving deeper and deeper to understand the customer demographic. So we're going like, we're being like an investigator right now, okay? Mention of new drinks to keep things fresh. Okay, you know what? That means that this demographic are always wanting something new, okay? Great, connecting people's desire to special and unique and how Cha Time has something for them, reiterating the ability to customize drink. Once again, this allows me to understand that customization is really key to this demographic next up is studying their social media introduction and their new reusable cups and discounts for using them once again we can see that there's a common theme about this type of customer demographic they're much more um, cautious to the environment to the purpose and their health and this is really what the Millennials are going for um, right now and that's the reason why they're doing it and typically speaking bubble tea places are a lot less um, health cautious they're a lot less purpose driven and Cha Tan does an amazing job by really focusing on what the new Millennial and their demographic is really looking for extremely high engagement compared to the usual posts so that means i know people are receiving well with this initiative now i dive into their comments okay we're looking at okay what what how how are people taking it do they do they like it do they not like it are they receiving to this or do they think it's just a gimmick well you know what as we're diving deeper we see that um let's see here Digging deeper, you'll see that discount is only available for Cha Time Cups, which is less than what people are hoping for, which means that discount to be applicable to all reusable cups, okay? Even at 25 cents off, appears that target market is price cautious. It means that people are, are digging it, people are, are liking it, but then there are some kind of like a back and forth in terms of managing people's expectation. So we know that for a fact, moving forward, if we were to create something similar, our messaging needs to be really on point. But that means that this customer demographic, they're very price cautious. Even 25 cents would make a difference. Whereas if you go to a fine dining experience, what is 25 cents? People don't care, right? What is 50 cents? People don't care. A difference between a $4 Coke and a 450 Coke doesn't make that much of a difference. That's the difference that we're talking about depending on who we are serving. And that's why we need to dissect our competitors in order to see what we offer our customer. As we di continue to dissect our online pro uh, channels, we see the negative stars. We see why, what is the biggest frustration with this company from these review sites. So oftentimes review sites are like Yelp, Google, and these are great sites. 
we inspect the four and five stars and also the one and two stars because we want to be able to see why are people loving them and why are people hating them so then that way we can do more of why people love them and do less of why people hate them miscommunication of promotions um and that the drinks came out wrong so we need to have make sure that we have proper protocols to ensure all, all the orders are correct repeat the orders back to the customer so then that way the customers know so these are all the insights that we're able to gather just by studying the online channels of our competitors super super insightful stuff i hope you can follow this and actually implement and execute on this because this is crucial to your restaurant's success next up number three is to set up a tent Let's assume we sat around downtown Robson Cha Time for five hours and we found this. And this is exactly what I did when I first opened up my restaurant. Imagine if I'm going to dedicate hundreds and thousands of dollars into my restaurants and years into it. What is a day setting up and just stalking our competitors worth? It's pretty much nothing, right? So take the effort to actually go and do this guys go out there set up a tent not literally but go out there and stalk your competitors so that way you guys can get insight so for me i was able to get um to understand what types of people are coming in 30 37 couples five families 56 solos 15 groups age range what are the clothes and brands that they wear casual wear trendy what kind of language do they usually speak by understanding the language not just the language they use but also the lingo that they use are they using specific lingos within their industry or are they just really regular people right so these are all insights what exactly are they ordering so by us seeing what they're ordering we can actually keep a tally of the most popular items and thus we can offer it on our own menu if we were wanting to compete with them um, and what is also trendy brown sugar pearls is really trendy right now and how do people get there is it walking is it by transit is it by driving what are they doing while they're waiting for the food obviously there are people are on their phones they're standing on the side watching waiting and talking to families what questions do they have when they're ordering what's your monthly special what does that mean when people ask that it means they always come back on the monthly special a monthly occasion to try out new items so that means that if a lot of people are asking that question it is a really good initiative that perhaps you can use and borrow at the same time do they either drink in or out 80% order and leave perfect these are all great insights just by you sitting there just by you observing just by you putting in extra effort and I can guarantee you more than 80% of the people that open up a restaurant would never ever conduct a research as thorough as what I'm presenting to you right now next up is talk to them let's say we, uh, we assume we give out five ten dollar Starbucks gift cards that's a pretty handsome amount for five to 10 minutes. People will gobble it up. No problem whatsoever. Okay. These are the items that we are able to find out a little bit more insight. 21 year old came solo study at UBC business, zero income, 23 year old came with girlfriend accountant, $40,000 salary by us really asking these things. We are now able to draw a pattern and that's exactly what we're trying to do. And this really gets us closer to our ideal customer avatar by us doing this. You can actually truly be able to create something that is tailored to your customer avatar. And that is really, really valuable insight. Okay. Why are they there for bubble tea fix? Only goes to cha time. Um, after lunch dessert. Okay, cool. That is another insight after lunch dessert. This is like a hint hint kind of thing. Snack after Korean barbecue. Once again, dessert, that's real. People are going there for that is amazing. So these are all really great insights. I really hope you can actually follow this and do this to the T by uncovering the interests and desires of your target customers to create your master avatar. This is super, super important. Number one, find your dream dogs. Second, dissect their online channel. Third, set up a tent. And lastly, talk to them. These are the steps in order for you to find out your customer avatar in the link below. Download that worksheet and fill it up as you go on. Okay. It is your turn to go out there and find and create your customer avatar. Next up, we're going to be talking about how, now that you've figured out your customer avatar. Okay. We're going to figure out the customer's inner psychology. After we collected all the different data, it is crucial for us to understand even one step further into what really pushes them to buy from you. And this 
is the stuff that's going to help you create a loyal customer fan base. This is stuff that was push all your competitors out of the way. So make sure you guys show up for the next lesson. I'll see you guys there.